This treaty deals with the high seas. So that's the part of the oceans that don't belong to any particular country. And historically, there's been no regulation of the high seas. Um, and this is the first time ever that we have a treaty that is the pathway towards protecting 30% of the high seas by 2030. So it's really happy news. What difference will it make for conservation efforts over the um, and reducing the impact of climate change? So the world's oceans are incredibly important for us. They, they are absorbing a lot of the global warming that we're currently seeing, that billions of people around the world rely on fish stocks um, in the global oceans. And so far, our oceans are suffering. So we're seeing huge amounts of ocean acidification with warming oceans. We're seeing huge amounts of plastic pollution. 10% of the wildlife in our oceans is at risk of extinction. So what this provides us now is a pathway to create marine sanctuaries in the high seas. And that provides a really important buffer um, for the resilience of those parts of the oceans. Um, it gives us a chance to sustainably manage fisheries. It gives us a chance to see off inappropriate development, whether that's deep sea mining or inappropriate fishing or inappropriate oil and gas development. So this is a really positive step. It's the first time we've seen anything like this. It's been 20 years in the making, this treaty, and it's, it's very happy news. How equitable is this plan? How do poorer nations feel about it? So this was one of the key sticking points in the negotiations. Um, this set of negotiations has taken two weeks. And as I said, it's been 20 years in the making. So equity was a key sticking point, but countries really showed from the global north and the global south really showed a willingness and an ability to compromise. Um, and that was a key agreement that was reached really late in the day, just in the final hours of the negotiation. It was very dramatic. The negotiators had been there, as you said, from over 100 countries for two weeks. Um, and that was part of the key deal that was reached was a more equitable distribution of the high seas resources. Yeah, and that's um, marine genetic resources. Uh, what are these and why are they so valuable? So these are the genetic resources that are um, discovered in our oceans that go into all sorts of technological breakthroughs, medicines, the kinds of things. We've seen it with the world's forests, right, is that over time we've discovered more and more really incredibly important biological material that's gone into some of our most important medical innovations, for example. Um, now, the high seas is very sort of underexplored. And so there's been a real race on to who gets to own that genetic material that's discovered for the first time in the world's oceans and that might lead to the next generation of medical breakthroughs, for example. And so that's been a key sticking point, who owns that genetic material. But real kudos to the negotiators um, people on both sides were able to negotiate and they've reached a more equitable deal. But we will be pushing for equity, equity to be a key consideration going forward because the resolution of this text is only the first step. Next, every country is going to need to ratify this and formally agree the treaty and then get on with the task of actually implementing it and creating the marine sanctuaries and ensuring that that genetic material is equitably distributed. I wanted to ask you about the next steps because it looks like there could be disagreements over the wording which Greenpeace does say have flaws in it. Yeah, look, there are some flaws in the text, but I want to be really clear, Greenpeace has been working on this for over 20 years. It's taken huge amounts of effort, other organisations too. So it does provide the critical piece which is it does provide that pathway to protecting 30% of the high seas by 2030. And that's why we're celebrating. But yes, there are key measures that we'll keep pushing for, and that includes um, the highest level of protection for those sanctuaries. So we don't wanna see sanctuaries created and then they're still allowed to be overfishing or new oil and gas infrastructure. So we'll be pushing for the highest levels of protection in the marine sanctuaries. Jessica Panagiris, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Thank you.